All right, now we're gonna talk about the water system on the Topo 2. So the first step in getting the water system prepped is of course, filling the 21 gallon tank. So we're gonna walk around the side of the trailer and show you how to do that. So one of the great parts of the Topo 2 is that the water can actually be filled uh, in one of two ways. So you can use pressurized water through a hose, which is how you would do it on the original Topo. But with the Topo 2, you can also gravity fill um, with a jerry can. So we're gonna show you the jerry can option here because this the uh, hose filling is relatively self-explanatory. You just remove this cap and then put the water in the trailer. Look at that, pretty easy. Um, there is an overflow that will uh, water, where water will start coming out of the trailer once your tank is full, and that will come through the rear receiver um, on your passenger side rear fender. We have a little bit of a tips and tricks thing here for you. So when you're going to re-thread the cover of the water tank fill um, on the side of the trailer, uh, it's very helpful to kind of bring the whole cover up to the side of the hole and drop the little beaded cable that keeps everything connected straight into it. And then from there, you can tilt it down and it kind of lands neatly in the threads and then you can twist it closed from there. So that just helps keep that um, cable away from the threads as you're trying to get everything tightened down. Now, once you have water in the tank, you're pretty much ready to use your water system. Um, from here, you just need to turn on the water pump. So there's a switch over here. You'll need to make sure that the master power is on to the whole trailer. And we'll show you that uh, when we give you a tour of the inside and go into more details on the electrical system on a whole. Um, but that switch will turn on the water pump. And then you can simply turn on the faucet and you will have running water to your sink. Now this is how it works if you just want cold water. If you want hot water, you need to make sure that the Truma, um, that is the dual purpose, water heater as well as the forced air cabin heater. That unit lives right behind here. You don't have to touch anything on the unit itself, but you do need to power it on and open the propane. So we'll take a closer look at those details right now. All right, so our first step towards having hot water in the top O2 is making sure that we have opened up our propane tank. In sticking with the theme of bringing all of the mechanical uh, mechanicals of this trailer to the interior of the trailer, you'll find the 11 pound propane tank located in the front tongue box. This is secured with uh, a tie down strap connected to um, anchors on the L track. And there's multiple different anchor points in here for additional cargo. So you're simply going to twist the knob to open and get that fully open. And then from here, we're gonna go power on the Truma and choose our water heater setting. All right, now we're gonna take a look at the Truma control panel to show you how to use the Truma Combi Eco Plus. As a reminder, the Truma is your dual purpose forced air cabin heat, as well as your water heater back in the galley uh, for the sink and the shower. Um, the fuel source for the heat generation is the propane. So it's essential that you make sure that the propane is open before the Truma will actually work. And we're gonna dive in and take a closer look at the control panel to show you how to set the interior temperature in the cabin, as well as how to set the temperature control for the hot water. So this is the main control panel, and you'll really notice there's, there's only two primary buttons here. You have this circular dial uh, and a little back arrow right here. Um, to get started, we're just gonna press in on this circular dial. You'll notice right off the bat that a little motorhome icon starts blinking, and that is to set the temperature for the interior temperature on the trailer. So once that starts blinking, you press again to select it. And right now we had it set at 60. If I just turn this dial to the right, we can set it all the way as high as 86 degrees. 
and then back down here as low as 40 degrees and then one more click to the left and it turns the heat off. Now you might be wondering why you would want something set at 40 degrees. This is an optimal setting if you're just trying to keep your system above freezing so that the pipes don't freeze and you can still use the water system, but you don't want to excessively use propane or heat. So we'll set this back to a comfortable cabin temperature here, about 62 degrees, and then we're just going to press in again. And the little flame icon here will flash and blink while things are starting to heat up. But since the cabin temperature is already at 62, uh, no, no other action is taking place. Now, if we want to go to the next thing here, uh, you'll notice this next icon is a thermometer in little wavy lines. So that is your water temperature. So you're going to again press in on that circular dial. Right now it's off you can set this to eco, hot, or boost mode. Now the difference between these three, three settings is really just the base temperature that they're going to heat the water to. So eco is going to heat the uh, water tank to uh, a temperature of 104 degrees, hot heats to 124 degrees, and boost is 144 degrees. Boost also overrides the cabin heat. So if you have this on boost mode, it's going to prioritize water over cabin heat. So you will not get heat to your cabin while you're on boost mode. Um, best practice when you get to camp, if you just wanna make sure that you have hot water in the tank ready to go at any point in time, is to just immediately set it to boost and get things up to temperature. And then you can go back and set it to um, one of the lower settings uh, for your regular use. And from here, you'll notice we have a fan icon. You can select this. When you have the heat set, you're going to have either an eco mode or a high mode. Um, this is just a fan speed, so eco is going to be a slower speed. High is going to be a higher fan speed. If you're not running the heat, you can still use the Truma as a fan and it will circulate air throughout the cabin. And at that point you will have about 10 different settings for the fan speed that you can cycle through. The next icon you'll notice is down here in the bottom left. And this is uh, a timer. So you can actually program the Truma to turn on and off at specific times throughout the day. And our next icon here is a clock. This is just how you set the time. So we're at 2.24 and the P stands for PM. Uh, and then over here is your tool icons. This is just gonna give you a bunch of different settings. We click into here and this is an offset. So the offset allows you to um, basically say, okay, the sensor thinks that it is X degrees in the cabin, but really, uh, we are going to offset it just a little bit. So it's just to help calibrate between the temperature reading inside the cabin and the activation on the Truma system. Um, that'll just depend on each unit. Um, so nothing specific that you need to do there. Temperature is just going to give you a choice between Fahrenheit and Celsius. We're going to keep it in Fahrenheit. Brightness is the screen brightness. So all the way up to 10, all the way down to 1. We're going to keep it somewhere in the middle here at seven. And then you have 12 or 24 hour time options, as well as language options. And finally, your index and reset. Um, the reset will just set back to the factory uh, default settings on the Truma system. And that should do it. One thing to note about the Truma as it functions as a water heater is that it has a two gallon reservoir. So the Truma is actively heating up that two gallon reservoir. And then when you use the water, it's mixing in cold water with the hot water in that tank. So on eco, it heats that tank to 104 degrees. On hot, it heats it to 120 degrees or 124 degrees. Uh, and then on boost, it heats it to 144 degrees. So this doesn't mean that when you use the shower on boost mode, it's going to be 144 degrees 
scalding hot water. It's going to mix in the cold with that. So it also means that you have a lot more than that two gallon tank capacity of usable water because it is mixing in colder water to make it a really comfortable um, shower or dishwashing temperature while you're using the water. To wrap up the conversation around the Truma in relation to the hot water, um, you'll notice on the side of the trailer, this unit here. This is both the intake and the exhaust for um, the air. So as the water heater is heating up water, the exhaust is gonna generate a little bit of condensation. So if you see some wetness here, it's nothing to be concerned about. Um, this looks a little bit crazier when you are camping in below freezing temperatures because the condensation is gonna continue to drip and you might see a little like icicle develop off the side of um, the exhaust here, but it is nothing to be concerned with. Once you have the propane tank opened up and the Truma powered on and set to your ideal water heater setting, you need to make sure that there's water inside of the Truma. So we did this step earlier where we turned on the water pump, um, but if you haven't done that yet in your process, once you get to camp, you just wanna make sure that you turn on that water pump. That way, if the tank is empty inside of the Truma, the pump will get water into it and then everything is just gonna start working on its own. This takes about 15 minutes for the water to get up to its ideal temperature, which is why we recommend once you get to camp that this is just part of your initial setup process, opening the propane tank, uh, setting the Truma and turning on the water pump. So we're gonna pretend that 15 minutes has passed and that we have hot water in this trailer um, and you're pretty much ready to go to use the sink or the shower. I showed you earlier how to turn that water on on the sink and we're gonna give you a closer look at the gray water system on the side of the trailer as well. So this is a pretty simple system. The sink just drains out of the side of the trailer. Uh, your trailer will come with a hose. So you just thread that hose onto this receptacle here and then drop the hose into an external jerry can. Um, we sell this as an add-on option as well. So you can pick up a jerry can. They're relatively inexpensive. This allows you to catch your runoff and then dispose of it in a proper way to be mindful of tread lightly principles. Once you have that all set there, you are good to go in using your sink. Now, if you wanna use your shower, there is minimal setup there. Uh, once you've got the water system prepped and your water is up to temperature, you're pretty much ready to go on that system as well. So your trailer will come with this shower head standard. This is on a nice little quick connect here that just pops into this lower receiver in the bottom. Um, to get that nice and secure, you wanna just make sure you're pressing down on the gray button on the top as you press this all the way in. And then when you let go, just give it a tug and make sure that it's secure inside the trailer. And then you're gonna take your magnetic shower mount. You're gonna place that on the side of the trailer, right here. <laughs> and then the shower head mounts in there. From here, it's just a matter of turning on the water. So we like having the shower on the side of your trailer. You can get a nice little teak mat to kind of elevate you up off the ground so the water runoff isn't gonna make your feet muddy while you're at camp. Um, and our recommended way for getting the water turned on um, is obviously to use <laughs> the water um, knob here. So to the left is your hot and to the right is the cold water. Uh, you'll just find whatever temperature is comfortable for you. And then there's actually a shut off at the shower head itself. So we'll open that up and turn this on. The water starts flowing and then you can wait until it's to the comfortable temperature, shut the shower head off just at the shower head itself, leave it on back here, then place it in. And I probably shouldn't open this on myself, uh, but then you can go ahead and turn the water on on the side of your trailer. And there's your shower.